Hi, my name is Mandy. I just finished my second year in biomedical sciences and I'm a member of our Second Life team. So today I'm going to show you around our virtual lab which sort of mirrors the lab techniques we are using for our iGEM project. It also helps in reinforcing concepts that we learn in molecular biology. So far what we've worked on is making general equipment that we would use in the lab and having them, oh, got a notice here. Okay, we'll just ignore that. Making, where was I? Making general equipment for the lab and I guess explaining how to use them. So we have things like a PCR machine, there's the water bath there if you want to see that. Working a restriction digest and back here we have gel electrophoresis. So what we're trying to do with these pieces of equipment is have them operate similarly to uh, what you would expect from a lab in real life. Uh, what we're trying to do is, I guess, teach the purpose of using the, these pieces of equipment and the procedures, and I guess kind of showing the possibilities you can get from working with them. So for example, with the PCR, we give note cards that explain what PCR is, sort of how it works, I guess the techniques associated with using it. So for, for the PCR, you'd explain the three steps of denaturation, annealing, and elongation, and why you need different temperatures for those. It also explains what you need to run PCR, etc. So by reading through these note cards, people can, I guess, learn about the equipment and at the same time they get information about how to progress further in um, the lab experiments they can do here. So for example, oh, let me walk back there for a second. Um, if you click the PCR machine, as you can see, it'll tell you what you need to run it. And then you'd go in the lab and mirroring our lab, we'd put it in the places you expect it. So certain components, well actually most of them, would be in the freezer for example and so people can click on the little boxes that uh, state the names of the objects they need and they put it in their inventory. And once you've collected everything you can go back to the piece of equipment and insert it into the contents. So once that's done, let's say you've got all of it together, you can run the PCR and the next stage will occur which will allow you to select temperature and time for each of the three steps I've talked about earlier and those would also be given from the note card that you read. So f a bunch of the other pieces of equipment work in a similar way in this lab including the gel electrophoresis and the phosphatase treatment for uh, vectors and what we're trying to do is really get a general example of if you started off with the DNA template and let's say you PCR'd it, maybe you could go straight to gel electrophoresis or maybe you want to sequence it, etc. So we're trying to work on getting um, products from each of our pieces of lab equipment to work in other parts of the lab and kind of getting in a, a variation, I guess, of the order you can do things in. And that variation will be really useful when we design uh, lab missions or activities, you could call them, for people to do where they ha have to go around different sections and try different things. So this week we're also going to work on doing variations of um, procedures within the equipment themselves. For example, if you want to run a PCR with a topo vector or a biobrick vector, which requires different sort of components. For the rest of the island, we're kind of laying out the design, making it a bit more intuitive for people to go between the lab section and the other couple sections that we'll be showcasing in the next couple of weeks. So that's our plan for this week and hopefully we'll have more to show you next week. Thanks.